This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. Good morning. Can't hear us. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Camelcine Regional Rail Commission meeting today, June 4th, 2021. Uh, let us please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Commissioners Hernandez. Here. Nay. Here. Hosey. Here. Miller. And just to note, Commissioner Miller did say she may not participate today. Commissioner Nuno. Young. Present. Vice Chair Zuber. Here. Chair Fugazi. Present. Let me run through ex officio members. Anyone from Caltrans? Present, Stephen Martinez. Thank you. Uh, SJ Cog. Steve Dial for Diane. Thank you. SJRTD. And Stan Cog. Bill Zalaki here. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, at this time, uh, are there any public, oh, excuse me, we're going to do a, sorry, a moment of silence for Valley Transportation Authority, the VTA workers from last week's tragic event. Thank you. Um, now, uh, do we have any uh, public comments? If you wish to make a public comment, please uh, make sure that you are uh, logged on and let us know that you wish to speak. We'll have uh, two minutes for public comments. There are no public comments. Okay. Moving on uh, to the consent calendar. Um, we are pulling item 3.13. Um, and we'll be discussing that. Otherwise, uh, we can move forward with the rest of the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve or would any of the commission like to pull any other items? 
Duber will move to approve. Thank you. Yeah, we'll second. Wonderful. Okay. Roll call. Commissioners. Fernandez? Yes. May? Yes. Bothy? Yes. Nuno? Yes. Young? Yes. Vice Chair Zuber? Yes. Chair Fugazi? Yes. Okay, motion passes seven to zero. Uh, moving on then to item 313, a resolution of the board authorizing the executive director to submit any and all grant applications, agreements, amendments, and any other, uh, and all, excuse me, other documents necessary to claim $291,759 in the 2021-22 uh, State of Good Repair Program funds. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Ms. Mortensen, Madam Chair. Um, just for some clarification, on the front page, the first page of the item 3.13, the chart below shows uh, SGR expenditure amounts, and those are actually revenue amounts. Um, as the chair, when you read the item, this is this is for the executive director's authorization to submit the grant applications and sign the documents. And with that, um, this funding is also goes to spare parts for the equipment, which are purchased by our contractor Herzog. So there will be no contracts coming back to this board for approval, as Herzog purchases all the spare parts for the equipment to keep them um, operating on the daily daily basis. So I just wanted to make that clarification for the board, and have I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the commission? Anything from the public? There are no public comments. Hey, okay. looking for a motion to approve? Young yeah, motion to approve. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, roll call. Commissioners Hernandez. Yes. A. Yes. Bothy. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Super. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Moving on then to item four. Uh, public hearing presentation and approval of the combined fiscal year 2021-2022 work program and operating budget in the amount of 32,261,803 and adopting the SJPA fiscal year 2021-2022 operating budget of $67,156,314 for a combined capital budget in the amount of $123,636,446. And I open the public hearing. Uh, I'll be kicking this off briefly and then handing it off to my colleagues to go into a lot of detail. Next slide. Just for frame of reference, uh, we have an enormous program ahead of us, as you might have seen from all of the items that were included in this package. I know it was a lot for all the board members to go through, so appreciate your uh, detailed attention to the matter. The program we're looking at this year and over the coming years, 27 cities, 12 counties, 444 track miles, uh, all, some existing, some new, but all within the scope of the items that you'll be approving as we go through this agenda. Next slide. But given that it is such a large undertaking, we need to have a focus. And so I just wanted to reiterate to the board, as you have uh, expressed to us over time, our commitments really are safety and security of the passengers, the commission, board and staff, and all our partners. That has to be number one. And then we, even in the excitement of expansion, our first duty and priority is the current day service, the constituents that we have. We have an ongoing duty to improve, enhance the technologies, more amenities, additional service uh, to our partners and communities along the corridor. And 
you know, it's amazing to still find out we can talk to neighbors or family members in certain parts of this area that say, oh, I didn't know there was a train that went from Stockton to San Jose. So we have to keep that drumbeat alive. We have to make sure everybody knows that option is there. And then making sure that everyone has access to ACE. There could be means-based barriers. We've been exploring that this year. We will expand that in the coming years, including to the San Joaquins, but just making sure that travel option is available to everyone. And then in this exciting new expansion program, really bringing what the commission does best, kind of a lean, mean approach to delivering projects most efficiently and the most cost effectively for the people who are paying for this, which is the taxpayers. And then our commitment to larger partners in the region and the state, that we will help be a partner to integrate all the services and not have annually services that are difficult for the passengers to connect. We view one of our primary roles as being that integrator of the services. Next slide. So I'm going to hand this off to Brian, who will walk you through. We're trying to be mindful of your time today. We will go through quickly because a lot of information was in the staff reports, but please feel free to ask the questions and the staff is prepared for anything that, you, that you'd like to hear more detail on. So Brian, take it away. Thank you. Um, well, like Stacy mentioned, you know, we're, there's a lot of, a lot of things we'll be doing this next year. For 2021 on the operating side, we're looking at starting out the fiscal year with three daily round trips. They're moving back to full service on September 7th with our four daily round trips. We'll be continuing the COVID-19 enhanced cleaning and disinfecting of the equipment and also communicating the health and safety protocols at stations and to our passengers. For safety and security, with the COVID restrictions being eased, we're going to go back to completing first responder employee training and drills and simulations, initiating projects along the corridor, and working with the host railroads on minimize, minimize trespassing on the railroad rights of way. Uh, positive train control, even though that is now required by law, there's still a lot of work to be done on that to keep the rail industry all in, in, in sync and step in step on getting things um, up and running more efficiently. Next slide. Uh, the one new item that's going this year is an increased utilization of rail maintenance facility. We, we're working in coordination with Caltrans and the three state JPAs on the inner city side to complete overhauls of the existing bi-level fleet and then begin the maintenance of the new state-owned venture passenger rail cars. So that's very exciting for us all here. So it's a new avenue for the Rail Commission. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to David LaPerry to go over the marketing efforts we'll be doing. Thanks, Brian, and, and good morning, uh, Ward. We're we're really excited for this upcoming year. As Brian mentioned, we'll still continue to be educating our passengers and communicating sort of all the safety protocols that are in place. But we anticipate this year, really ridership recovery being a you know, real component of our marketing efforts and re-engaging with current and past riders to come back and ride uh, the service, as well as doing some other tactics in the corridor, like engaging with our business partners, as well as our stakeholders to magnify the message, like Stacey mentioned, to to let all of our communities know once again that ACE is a viable option to get to and from work. We'll also be engaging with realtor and developer groups as people move to uh, other parts of our corridor to engage them with the message of the train right away before they get sort of used to taking their single occupancy uh, vehicle, you know, sort of to, to and from work. And then we'll also be looking at developments of apartments and condos in the station areas around the ACE corridor and how we could engage with those uh, residents who can even bike or walk to their uh, local A station and, and make sure that they're aware that they can utilize uh, the service. So a lot of different efforts, both these and beyond, to make sure that ridership recovery is, is really a focus for uh, the marketing department and for the service overall. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, David. Next slide. So just as a note to the board, we are comparing Fiscal year 21-22 um, budget proposed to fiscal year 19-20 budget because that was the, the last pre-pandemic year. Just just for comparison, um, there's been no significant changes at all in the project management services applies budget than from what was presented in May. Next slide. Um, the same goes for the contracted services budget. There's been no significant changes. 
but I will note that the total operating expenses, they are up 5% from the 1920 fiscal year. Um, and that is because the contracts that Rail Commission has are all tied to consumer price index. And over the last two years, uh, the consumer price index has just has been a little over 5%. Next slide. As you can see, the operating revenues um, are the same as we had last month, or 5% increase, or matches the operating expenses, proposed operating expenses. Next slide. So, as noted in the staff or in the uh, resolution, the PA budget is provided to this board um, because it provides the executive director the authority to implement the JPA's budget, operating budget. Uh, without that, there'd be no authority for the budget to be expended. So in looking at the, in this budget, the chart is compared, the 2021-22 budget is compared to the um, last year's SJJP operating budget. And the reason for that is at the time, it was unclear on the Amtrak costs for the fiscal year. So the SJJP um, board approved a full operating budget for Amtrak. So we were able to do apples to apples comparison from one year to the next. The so next slide. So you can see the overall operating expenses for the San Joaquin Joint Powers Authority is an increase of 2%. Next slide. And all the revenues for the through the SJGAPA are um, from the state of California intercity rail funds. I'd be happy to answer any questions of the board at this time. Any questions from the commission? We still have a capital program to go through. Yeah. Okay, moving on to uh, our capital program. Kevin Sheridan, it's all yours. Thanks, Brian, and good morning. Uh, so for the capital program this year, the proposed budget, or for, excuse me, for fiscal year 21-22 is approximately $123,636,000. Uh, the revenue sources are comprised of uh, multiple different types of funding sources from uh, state, uh, federal, and local transportation sources as seen here. Next slide, please. The bulk of the program is compressed into these bullets, which is covers uh, about 120 miles north-south and 140, 150 miles, depending on which way you come from, east-west for the connections. And I'll expand more on the next slide of what, where these areas are. And on the right side is the target dates or dates that have occurred where we began final design and or anticipate uh, beginning construction to see. Next slide. So the miles that I quoted in the previous slide, if you see the areas in yellow are really related to the items in the previous slide as far as where the capital program exists and those are areas where we're currently under contract doing work and what makes up that budget and as you can see um, it's quite expansive uh, just from the bullets comparing the, the bulleted list to the actual map uh, north south is you know well over 120 uh, miles of new expansion and we go east west for the existing service from Stockton to San Jose which is 85 miles and you add 60 miles to the north and uh, 60, uh, 57 miles to the south and that gives us 140 150 miles of expansion both east west north south so it's it's pretty pretty impressive when we look at the overall program and what we have uh, working towards in our in our future next slide please this is a Stockton diamond grade separation. I'm gonna to defer to the next item, item five, for there'll be a lot more information just in the essence of time. Um, that Stockton grade separation, obviously a big part of our program. Next slide, please. And we also have uh, a lot of new equipment and existing maintenance, uh, or maintenance of existing equipment and extending the track extension from Cabral station to the regional maintenance facility as well as uh, expanding the rail maintenance facility and uh, some impressive shots, especially uh, up in the corner there of our 10 car consist test train with the new chargers coming over the Altamont. Uh, I believe it's the longest one in the state. Next slide, please. 
other improvements that are, are local, but very important to the cities, City of Tracy, working with the City of Tracy Public Works Department on improving parking circulation at the existing uh, Tracy A station. And in Stockton, uh, bottom left is the West, formerly the Western Pacific building where we have a new parking and building uh, currently slated to go to construction later this year. And on the right corner is the East Channel uh, street improvements that really link the downtown area and RTD uh, to uh, the Cabral Station, which improves um, bike ped access and, and access just throughout the two different transit and rail systems uh, in the area. Next slide, please. Also included in the capital program are those projects that uh, are part of the San Joaquin Joint Powers Authority for the San Joaquins. And that list continues to grow as well. If you were to look at it a couple of years ago, it was much shorter, but as you see the, the bullets, there's a lot of work, ongoing work and that will continue to get larger uh, as we do more work with BNSF and for the San Joaquins at those areas and locations. Next slide, please. And with that, um, staff's recommendation to the board and uh, commissioners is to approve the resolution, resolution to adopt combined fiscal year 21-22 work program and operating budget for the amount shown and also for the capital uh, budget for the amount shown. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from the commission? Okay. Uh, any public? Public comments on this item. Well, I'll I'll just say that uh, I thank you to staff um, for this wonderful report. It is so exciting to see that we haven't missed a beat and that we are continuing to move forward with a number of projects that are going to improve access uh, and availability um, for uh, ridership in the in our future. Um, so, uh, with that, uh, Commission, do I have a motion to approve? Duber will move to approve. Yang will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioners, Hernandez. Yes. May. Yes. Hothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fagazi. Yes. And thank you very much on behalf of the staff. <laughs> okay, motion passes. Okay, moving on to item five, approve a resolution adopting findings uh, associated mitigation monitoring plan, certifying an EIR, uh, approving the Stockton Diamond Grade separation project and authorizing and directing the executive director to execute and file a notice of determination under CEQA for the project and authorizing and directing executive director to execute any and all documents related to the project. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, commissioners. Go to the next slide, please. So this is the final EIR for the Stockton Diamond grade separation. This is a critical passenger freight mobility project at the busiest at grade crossing of railroads in the entire state. Uh, this at-grade crossing is known as the Stockton Diamond, and currently the A service and the Amtrak San Joaquin service are constrained by that diamond. And it's where the North-South Union Pacific Railroad and the East-West BNSF Railway cross, and this really is a, a bottleneck for the entire state. Grade separating this at-grade crossing will help improve the operational performance for ACE and San Joaquins and help freight mobility throughout the Central Valley, Sacramento, and San Francisco Bay Area. Next slide. So as you know, the proposed project will construct a grade separation of the railways and allow traffic to flow inter uninterrupted throughout the crossing. This will reduce delays for passenger freight rail, improve freight mobility, and improve vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian traffic mobility. This will also help reduce locomotive and automobile idling and air emissions. And just to go over the project goals and objectives, the goals and objectives are to reduce passenger freight rail delays and associated congestion, maintain key community connections, improve multimodal access, provide local and regional environmental and economic benefits, and address safety by closure and enhancements at roadway rail grade crossings. Next slide, please. 
So the project benefits include stimulating mobility by improving regional passenger and freight rail efficiency and travel reliability, enhancing safety by improving Stockton residents access safety mobility across the rail lines through enhancements or closures of at grade crossings, economic vitality by reducing delays that will result in increased throughput and more efficient goods movement. This will in turn decrease fuel consumption and lead to cost savings. Inspire connections by supporting faster, more reliable passenger rail service, linking residents to family, jobs, and recreational destinations throughout Northern California. And improving sustainability by improving air quality through the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from trains and vehicles due to decreased idling and congestion. Next slide, please. So this shows you the overall project footprint. Uh, north is on the left of your screen and west is on the bottom of your screen. So east is on the top and south is on the right hand side. So the project footprint is very extensive, uh, going from Weber Avenue at the north near Kapal Station to the Um Civic Stockton Yard at the south. And it shows the proposed project, which includes shifting the Um Civic tracks to the east slightly, shown there in green, to fly over the BNSF railway tracks, shown there in blue, going from the top and bottom of your screen. This will involve some right away acquisitions of commercial and vacant land. I should note that no acquisitions of residential properties will occur. Next slide, please. This shows you kind of the vertical layout of the project now, and it shows modifications that will be needed at several at-grade crossings at Weber Avenue, East Main Street, and East Market Street, crossing closures at East Lafayette Street and East Church Street, and then grade separations at East Hazleton Avenue and East Scotts Avenue before the UP tracks fly over the BNSF crossing in the center of your image there and then cross back down to reach back to grade of UP Stockton Yard in the south on the right hand side of your image. Next slide, please. This is a rendering of the proposed project showing in the uh, upper right hand corner is north and the lower left hand corner is south and west is on your left side of the image and east on the right side. This is showing the proposed grade separation, which would be really coding relocating the Yuma Pacific track slightly to the east, as I noted. Currently, they are kind of in the center of your image and they'd be shifted slightly to the right. And then the Yuma Pacific tracks would start rising up south of the Crosstown Freeway, State Route 4, and then fly over BNSF before touching back down to grade at the Yuma Pacific Stockton Yard. Next slide, please. This is a proposed concept of three different structure options. We have three different potential variants. One would be a retaining wall. Next slide. The next would be an earthen embankment. Next slide. The last would be a viaduct structure. And I should note that through this EIR, we are not asking the board to make a selection of the preferred structure type. This structure type will be determined during the final design phase in coordination with the Pacific Railroad. Each of the structures has different benefits and costs associated with them. The most expensive being the viaduct and the least expensive being the retaining wall. They also have different impacts when it comes to uh, visual impacts and also community concern from potential trespassers and uh, people illegally occupying the site as shelter. Next slide, please. So under CEQA, the Rail Commission is the lead agency. At the same time, we are also preparing a National Environmental Policy Act or NEPA document. The lead agency for that document is the High Speed Rail Authority under their NEPA assignment agreement through the Federal Railroad Administration. Originally, we were scoping this as a joint CEQA NEPA environmental document. However, back in February, we split the document due to schedule and funding constraint delays. The NEPA document will be completed separately and we hope to wrap that up this fall. Next slide, please. So through the project, we had analyzed several different concepts before coming up with the proposed project alternative, which was shown in the previous images. We analyzed two alternatives in the yard at an equal level, the no build alternative in the left, where you see the existing Stockton Diamond at grade crossing, and the proposed project, which is alternative 1A in the right. Other alternatives were considered, but they were screened out as they were not feasible, they had greater environmental impacts or did not meet the project purpose and need. And these include additional concepts for Union Pacific flying over the BNSF, other concepts where BNSF would fly over Union Pacific, and then a couple of hybrid concepts where one railroad would cross over the other and the other would be depressed slightly in a trench. These other alternatives were 
all dismissed as I stated as infeasible or having greater impacts or did not meet the project purpose and need. Next slide, please. So the resources analyzed in the EIR are required by CEQA. In addition, we also analyzed additional topics such as environmental justice due to requests from the public. Next slide. Back in August, the Rail Commission launched the environmental review process for this project through a notice of preparation for an EIR. We extend the normal scoping period of 30 days, an additional 15 days to allow more time for the public and stakeholders to comment on the project to provide input during COVID. We held three virtual scoping meetings and received many um, suggestions from the public on what to analyze in the EIR. The draft EIR was circulated on March 15th and a 45-day public review period was begun, which ended on April 29th. All parties were encouraged to per provide input on the draft EIR, and we provided a virtual meeting on April 6th to solicit comments from the public, along with five virtual stakeholder forums to provide more information about the project. During the 45-day public review period, we received 27 comment letters. All comments have been responded to in the draft ER through Appendix M of the final EIR. Next slide, please. Overall, the project will result in regional and local benefits to mobility, air quality, greenhouse gas emissions, and energy use. There will be no significant and unavoidable impacts or communally considerable or unavoidable impacts to any resource analyzed in the EIR after mitigation. There are four resources areas that will result in less than significant impacts after mitigation. This includes biological resources, land use and planning, hazards and hazardous materials, and noise and vibration. Next slide. Project funding is a uh, wide variety of funding sources, including 98.4 million from Senate Bill 132, 20.8 million from the State Transportation Improvement Program, $20 million from the Federal Build Grant, which was awarded last year by the U.S. Department of Transportation, and $100 million from the Senate Bill 1 Trade Quarter Enhancement Program, which was awarded last December by the California Transportation Commission. There's no fiscal impact at this time, However, I should note that certification of the final EIR today is required by the California Transportation Commission as a condition of receiving that $100 million TSEP grant. Any or all contracts or agreements expending these funds in the future will be brought back to the board for approval. Next slide, please. So our recommendation is, as the chair noted, that you approve the EIR, including the adopting the findings, adopting the associated mitigating monitoring plan, certifying the EIR, approving the project, and authorizing and directing the director to execute and file a notice of determination under CEQA for the project. And at this time, I'm available to answer any questions. I also have Kevin Sheridan of our staff available to answer questions, and we have members of the project team from HDR to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, are there any questions from any of the commissioners? I have one question. Go ahead. Back in the presentation, there were three options for construction. At this point, has a decision been made about which one of the three, or is that at some future point from now? I wasn't clear on that. I didn't understand that part. So we are not asking you to make a decision today on the structure type. That decision will be made later, as you stated, during the final design phase in coordination with the Pacific Railroad on which structure type we would be approving. And I should note that the cost of the structures range from 189 million to 314 million. So really, it really comes down to also budget and what we have available in the funding program to be able to do those different options in addition to the concerns of uh, maintenance and people illegally accessing the site. So any one of those three, falls within all the air, things that have been studied in the EIR. They all, regardless of which one we pick, this EIR allows it to happen. Correct, all three design options have been analyzed equally in the EIR. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Okay. I see we have a public comment. Is it Mr. Wolf? Okay, Mr. Yeah. Wolf, you're up. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, uh, this might be kind of a dumb question, but um, with respect to the land that's taken up by this, 
is all of that land Union Pacific or BNSF land, and will it be that way when you complete the project? So there are 12 parcels that will be acquired for, by the project. Uh, if we can go back a few slides, Jackie, to the overall map. A couple more slides. And we have two more slides. There we go. So the parcels that are being acquired are shown there in the salmon color. This includes five businesses with stars on them uh, being relocated as part of the project. We will be coordinating with the city of Stockton and Union Pacific Railroad on the future ownership of these parcels and any remnant parcels as outlined in the EIR. We are cognizant of the city's concerns that they would not like to have small remnant parcels that do not be in the future, but we will be coordinating with both host railroads and the city on the right-of-way acquisitions. Can you repeat that? The train horn wiped out some of what you said, the last couple sentences. So we will be coordinating with the city of Stockton and both railroads on the final ownership of the parcels that are being acquired and the parcels that will be no longer needed by the project. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Okay. Um, bringing it back to the commission, I don't know how many of you participated in any of the virtual meetings uh, or used the documents. Um, but I, I can say that uh, I was very impressed and appreciated all the work of everyone. So closing the public hearing, I'm bringing it back for a vote of the commission. Her name yes, moves to approve. Zuber will move to adopt the resolution. We'll go with Young and Zuber <laughs> for the motion. And the second. Commissioners, Hernandez. Yes. May. Yes. Hothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fagazi. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, moving on to item six, there are two action items on this, uh, authorizing the executive director to um, submit applications to the California Strategic Growth Council for grant funding under the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities Program, and authorizing the executive director to execute any and all documents related to a project. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, commissioners, I'll be handling this item again. Next slide, please. So the Affordable Housing Sustainable Communities Program is designed to fund affordable housing developments, housing-related infrastructure, sustainable transportation infrastructure, and land preservation to support infill development. Uh, this program helps to provide funding for transportation projects such as bicycle pedestrian projects and also transit-related projects uh, such as providing improvements that benefit the ACE and San Joaquin service. Uh, back in February, uh, the state announced that $405 million was available in funding for the sixth round of this funding program. And in the past, uh, the Rail Commission has partnered with developers to receive funding for projects, including $4 million to purchase rail car, uh, partnering with Visionary Home Builders California for their Grand View Village project in Stockton, and also $4 million for another rail car with EH Inc. and the City of Modesto for their Archway Commons project. Uh, for round six, we're looking at partnering with two different developers. Next slide, please. So we are looking at partnering with EEH again, which is currently proposing to construct 140 units of affordable housing and development known as On Broadway in the city of Sacramento. This project is located south of the future Midtown Station in Sacramento, which is shown there in the right. Uh, EEH is requesting a total of 29 million in ASIC funds, of which 6.1 million would go towards the purchase of two rail cars for the ACE service, and 1.3 million would contribute towards the construction of the Midtown Station. Next slide, please. The next project is Service First Hunter House project. This project is located near downtown Stockton and it's 120 units of affordable housing. Service First is requesting a total of 26.7 million in ASIC funds, of which 2.5 million would be contributed towards the purchase of one rail car for the ACE service 
and 1.3 million will be contributed towards the construction of street lighting and pedestrian amenities near the Cabral Station and Amtrak Sam Keen Street Station in Stockton. And there's a couple images showing conceptual locations of those street lights on the right, which around Cabral Station would be along Main Street and Market Street between Aurora and Union Streets. And at the Sam Keen Street Station for Amtrak, that would be along Sam Keen Street between East Hazleton Avenue and East Warwick Street. Next slide, please. Formal applications for the ASIC funding are due next week. Uh, the applicants, the developers, are the ones submitting those applications. However, they are required to have executed agreements between the Rail Commission and themselves to commit to implementing improvements. If funding is not awarded by the state, there's no obligation for the Rail Commission to design or construct any of these improvements, nor procure any rail cars. The Rail Commission is also not obligated to design or construct the proposed housing projects under any circumstance. Next slide, please. Fiscal impact, there is no fiscal impact at this time. If funding is awarded, it will be amended into the capital budget, and future capital budgets will identify all costs occurring in upcoming fiscal years as needed. Next slide, please. So our staff recommendation is that you approve both resolutions to enter into the agreements with EAH Housing and Service First in Northern California. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? Uh, Madam Chair, I might add, you can take this as one motion to cover both, or you could separate it into two if there was a desire. Okay. Uh, any questions from the public? There are no public comments. Okay, bring it back to the commission. We can take it as one motion. I will go ahead and move as one motion. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner thank Hernandez. You. I'll second. And thank you, Commissioner May. A roll call vote. Commissioners Hernandez. Yes. May. Yes. Pulte. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, moving on to item seven, an agreement with California Gold Advocacy Group for Altamont Corridor Express Tri-Valley Outreach Services not to exceed 153,000 and authorizing the executive director to execute any and all documents related to the project. Good morning, Chair Fugazi and commissioners. Uh, could we go to the next slide? This is a, an action item to retain a, a local um, grassroots outreach consultant to be on the ground uh, for the Tri-Valley area which is the Livermore, Dublin, Pleasanton area. Uh, we've really found that um, having uh, outreach consultant support in the Bay Area is, is an important component of our approach for stakeholder engagement. And this is particularly true with our headquarters in Stockton and the San Joaquin Valley and our staff located in the San Joaquin Valley that having consultant support in the Bay Area, Bay Area on the ground is, is critical for, for getting support for our initiatives for ACE and for our try to secure funding uh, in the Bay Area as well. Go to the next slide. The outreach consultant will be working with businesses, with key groups, chambers, partnerships, agencies, universities, and organizations, uh, particularly in the Tri-Valley area, but for this contract also in Contra Costa County as well. And uh, again, we, we, we really believe that um, having them help us uh, get word out about our content and about our service is important for for getting support in the Bay Area for our initiatives, for funding, um, for, for looking out for our interests at station areas, as, as well as um, this next year helping us increase ridership for the service. Next slide. At this point, I'm gonna turn over the presentation to Autumn. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. The Rail Commission in March 2021 released an RFP via Planet Bids, and a single proposal was received from California Advocacy Group in Dublin, uh, located in Dublin, California. The proposal was evaluated by a panel consisting of the Rail Commission's Manager of Regional Initiatives, Marketing Manager, and also the LAFTA Executive Director. Following established procurement procedures, Rail Commission staff obtained adequate competition was not available, and that it was in the Commission's best interest to move forward with recommending the single proposal received. 
The contract commencement date is July 1st, 2021, with an end date of June 30th, 2024, and has two one-year options. If utilized, the option years will be brought before the board for approval as part of the annual budget review and approval process. Next slide, please. Expenses are uh, identified in the 2021 budget in the community engagement and marketing line. And this is a multi-year agreement and future year's costs will be brought before the board for consideration as part of the annual budget review approval. And with that, staff recommends the agreement with California Gold Advocacy Group for the Tri-Valley Services for ACE. And Dan and I would be happy to take any questions. Okay, any questions from the commission? I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner May. Yes, so I was just wondering, um, I apologize because I'm coming later into this. I know that I just joined the commission, but when we're looking at this, um, is this agency have a specific designee in terms of who will be representing us? And I was just curious because we are in the process of looking at the whole um, rail connection and this rail study, regional rail study. And I'm concerned a little bit because we have certainly a lot of questions right now when we talk about the South Bay Connect corridor and how that's going to impact possibly the rail changes um, in the ACE service along the lines that we're talking about to um, Santa Clara in particular through Fremont, um, Newark, Union City, and, and I have a separate meeting regarding that. But will they also be doing any outreach or will they be providing services? Or I'm, I'm, I guess we, I, since I didn't know about this at that time, we certainly didn't have anyone submit a bid for the proposal. So I just like to know what this, the service delivery plan is for the engagement to ensure that it's being um, spread to, because otherwise we're duplicating efforts because we're doing so much outreach right now on the South Bay Connect corridor. Ideally, if we had looked at it, we would have had the complete regional rail study done inclusive of the South Bay Connect corridor and had the community outreach ahead of time, which is why we're now in this, um, uh, the cart before the horse situation right now in, in the, the tribe city area. And so I just want to know like who will be doing this role? How will we engage this person or people? Because I don't know anything about California Gold Advocacy and um, how will we review? in terms of the quality. If they're not performing the service or are performing the services, how will they be evaluated? Is there a rubric? And how will we get our um, input in? Yeah, I, just uh, two, two things on this. First, uh, for California Gold, the, the, the person that we are, are really getting to do this work is, is Guy Houston. And he is someone who we do know. He's been doing work for us in the Tri-Valley area for, for a couple of years, um, previously through uh, Winter Consulting. And um, I did want to just note that with the Tri-City area, that's really for our next item. So he, so so Guy Houston and California Gold will be folks in the Tri-Valley at Dublin, Livermore, Pleasanton area. And so that doesn't touch so much on the South Corridor work. That's more with Winter on the next item. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we're working in collaboration with each other because I'm, I'm just concerned that we don't end up with isolated plans and that Absolutely. we have a piece Because that was one of the comments that we heard a lot of when we're talking at uh, ACTC and some of the other community groups is that sometimes we worry that plants are being um, evolved separately. That's why I'm so excited to be able to be part of this um, is so we can have a more holistic and comprehensive view when it comes to delivery of rail and certainly the services that it impacts and the outreach are critical. So thank you so much for the opportunity to ask these questions. Chair yeah. Hernandez has a question as well. Yes, go ahead. So what would those firm actually be doing and how will they be doing outreach? And then also the last question would be how they will they be working with Valley Link? Yes, they will absolutely be working with, with Valley Link. Um, but also I, I should note that um, that we as staff work, I, I work very closely with, with the Valley Link staff as well and other staff from, from our agency work with Valley Link. And I, I think you, you would, you'll note that in terms of the budget for, for, for this contract versus the, the Silicon Valley contract, it, it is less of a budget. Part of that is because we, as staff, do more work. It's easier for us to get to the Tri-Valley area, and we have more staff interaction, in part because of our, our relationship with the Valley Link effort. So that, and that's part of the reason that there's a difference in the amount of budget, but absolutely this consultant will help us with that coordination um, to, to make sure that we're, we're, we're doing a joint message and, and, and we really try to work very complementary efforts on, on that. 
Um, there's a variety of kind of tasks that the, the consultant does, and I, th I think you, you saw in the book item, there was a number of different items that we asked for them, um, helping us reach out to these various entities and, and making sure that people are aware of, Stacey, as Stacey mentioned earlier, that there are still folks that don't know of, that we even exist, and so part of it's getting that messaging out. But for this particular contract, it, it, it's also really not just about sort of ridership and awareness, it's also trying to get support, develop champions, make sure that, that the community is aware of our initiatives and our, our efforts to try to expand the service. In addition, uh, um, station areas, uh, things happen around communities that are stations and trying to make sure that, that we do um, keep the community aware of, of our needs and to make sure the interests of base so that things that happen are supportive of, of our future improvements as well. So there's a, a variety of tasks that they do. They work, they report directly to our staff and, and, and really help give us someone like on the ground that's embedded in the community since we can't on a daily basis. So Dan, will they give us a weekly report or a bi-weekly we, report? We get monthly reports, but we can't, I mean, well. typically the contract's monthly reports and we can absolutely get those provided to the board. Yeah, I just wanna make sure I, I know what's going on. Yes. Okay, any other questions from the commission? Okay. Any public questions, comments? There are no public comments on this item. Okay, bring it back to the commission for a motion. No move. Okay, that was uh, Commissioner Hothi for a mo motion and a second. Zuber will second. Zuber for the second. Roll call. Commissioners Hernandez. Yes. Nay. Yes. Hulti. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fagazi. Yes. Motion passes, seven to zero. Uh, Madam Chair and members of the commission, I think uh, Commissioner Hernandez had a very good idea. We do a monthly report as it relates to our federal advocacy services. So what we can do is add on to the consent calendar activities of both this um, partner for us and then as well as the next item that Dan will go over. I think that's a terrific idea. Yes, and so item eight, similar to item seven. However, this is an agreement with Winter Consulting Group for the ACE Silicon Valley Outreach Services not to exceed $246,000 and authorizing the executive director to execute any and all documents related to the project. Dan again. Yes, thank you. If we go to the next slide. So again, this is another action item, very similar to the last one, but this one's really focused on the Silicon Valley, which, which we're really defining as uh, the Tri-City area, Fremont, Union City, Newark, and Santa Clara County. Uh, so I'm not going to repeat the same things I did last time. If we go to the next slide, and, and again here, uh, as a, the, the consultant will be working with businesses, chambers, partnerships, agencies, universities, but this in this case with the Tri City area and with Santa Clara County, and again doing the same sorts of activities that we talked about for the, for the Tri Valley with the previous item. I, I, since Mayor, since you raised the issue at the last item, I, now I'll. I'll, I'll kind of touch upon in terms of the, the, the person, the main person for this uh, contract is Corinne Winters, who's the president of this, of this firm. Uh, she's done work with us for a number, I think over five years now. Um, and we've been very pleased with the work that, that, that she has done. Um, she does have a couple other people on staff as well that are that are um, folks that can help with, with various um, events and things like that that we might wanna attend. Uh, absolutely, I think that the point that you raised, um, we're, we're very aware of the sensitivities of the, of the South Corridor Connect project. And, and, and the problem that we even have is we have another project that you, you probably saw in our work program that has a name that's relatively similar with the, the South County study, which we call the SoCo study. So people get confused. Are, are we part of that or not? And how are these related? And I, I would just say that that shows you more than anything of why we need somebody on the ground to help explain these things because we are not the South Corridor Connect. Um, we, are, we are an interested party, but that's not our project. And we need to make it very clear and we need to help to, to explain to people the differences. And we're gonna be taking a much bigger role 
over the next two years in the South County work. And, and we think that's really exciting work. We've been working very, very closely with your staff uh, as well as the staff with, with Union City and with, with, with uh, Fremont, with, sorry, and with uh, Newark. And, and we uh, look forward to a presentation to, to you at, the, at your uh, council meetings coming up in July. But we're really excited about the next couple of years where it, it's very possible because of our issues um, in terms of being able to get additional service down to San Jose that we might be um, in the future actually having ACE trains that, that, that terminate in, in the Tri-City area. Being able to figure out how we can do that and where that can be is really important. So we've got, I think we have really good support from the three cities to do that, but we have to make sure it's clear to people how we're different from the other and that not to get these confused. And so having someone on the ground, since I can't be there on a daily basis, is really important. But I assure you as well, I will be down there too whenever I is needed for, for us to help with that effort. And I'll turn it over to Autumn, sorry. <laughs> Uh, next slide. All right, thank you again. So this is very similar um, to the previous item. We released the RFPs at the same time in March 2021 on Planet Bids. We received a single proposal from Winter Consulting located in Berkeley, California. The proposal was evaluated by a panel of the managers, excuse me, the Rail Commission's manager of regional initiatives, the marketing manager, and this time we had a representative from the city of Fremont, the executive special assistant. Uh, again, following the procurement procedures, the Rail Commission staff de deemed um, adequate competition was not available and that it's in the best interest to move forward with recommending the single proposal received. The contract commencement date is the same, July 1st, with an end date of June 30th, 2024, and they also have two one-year options. If used, the option year can be brought for the board for approval as part of the annual process. Next slide, please. So the fiscal impact, again, the expenses are identified in the 2021-22 budget in the community engagement and marketing line. This is again a multiple, multiple year agreement and future year's costs will be brought for the, before the board for consideration as part of the annual budget review and approval process. And again, we recommend approval of this agreement with California Winter Consulting Group for Silicon Valley Outreach Services for ACE. And we would again, if there's any additional questions, be happy to take them. Okay, any questions from the commission? I think we have a public comment from Mr. Uh, Wolf. You can go ahead. Okay, um, with respect to the, I, I haven't heard of the South Bay Connect. It makes sense that somebody's doing it, but um, with respect to getting into Santa Clara, the 2040, MTC uh, 2040 plan indicated that um, by 2040, um, over almost 600,000 people from Alameda County would be going into Santa Clara. BART to San Jose is not even a tenth of that practically. So essentially, Capital Corridor and, and or ACE would have to be the main carriers of people from Alameda or from San Joaquin into the Silicon Valley. Um, that also would include Dumbarton. There's currently a Dumbarton plan. Um, it would be really nice, I think, for Fremont and the rest of the area to actually have a Shin Road transfer station between ACE and, and BART. That way, people in, the, in those, those cities could get on BART transfer to ACE, go in directly into the Silicon Valley, even even have a South Bay loop where ACE trains, instead of sitting still all day, could do a loop around the South Bay, would pro provide service that BART can't possibly do. Those kind of considerations never made it in uh, to the previous plans in the last 24 years. Um, that should be included in this kind of stuff, and I, I hope uh, ACE is able to, to get forward on this and, and get into both Redwood City and Santa Clara from the South. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Okay, I'll bring it back to the commission for a motion for approval. I'll move it for approval, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'll move second. Okay, so uh, a motion from uh, Commissioner May and a second from Young. Roll call. Commissioners. Hernandez. Yes. May. Yes. Othi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. 
Thank you, Chair Fugazi. <laughs> yes, motion carried. Okay, okay before staff, before the train. <laughs> promised the board we would try to be done in an hour, so please be cognizant of your report, and then if the board members have questions, they certainly can pull it. But like, if we have duplicate processes, let's just shortcut it, please. Thank you. Okay, item nine, agreement with Marriott San Jose downtown for crew rest facility services for an amount not to exceed 670000 $248 and authorizing the executive director to execute any and all documents related to the project. Thank you. Next slide, please. I'll be very brief. Uh, prior to the pandemic, train onboard train crews had labor facilities in San Jose to help facilitate afternoon on time uh, departures because of the congestion coming to, to and from Stockton. Um, it was very difficult for everyone to get there on time. So as you can see, as part of the Federal Railroad Administration regulations, we are obligated to provide them crew facilities if we let them, if we lay them over. Um, the slide says the rest of it. We have looked in the past about other facilities, but they have not penciled out. Um, I will turn it over to Autumn Gowan now. Thank, thank you, Brian. Um, I will attempt to be brief. Uh, next slide, please. So solicitations for contracts that start in July of each year usually typically usually need to be released with the, by March of the current year, um, because of the COVID pandemic. Staff just decided that at this time and in in March of this year that we there was not still not enough open competition to release an RFP for crew rest facilities. So we reached out to Marriott, who is has been providing the services, and they agreed to continue with the agreement that we've had in place for over a year, um, and that they would provide hotel rooms on an as-needed basis. Next slide, please. Uh, Marriott also kept the room rate, which is $132, um, and multiplying that out by service dates and numbers of rooms gives us our not to exceed amount of a little bit over $670,000 for the year. Again, this is on an as-needed basis, so when we use or if we use rooms, then we will um, expend those funds. It is in the commission's best interest to continue this agreement with Marriott so that we can um, add service as needed and utilize the hotel rooms when we need to and not have to wait to bring them to the board. Um, next slide, please. And with that, the expenses are in the fiscal year budget, the 2021 the 22 budget in the ACE operations and maintenance line and staff recommends approval of this agreement and we would be happy to take any questions. Any questions from the commission? I have a quick question really quick. This is Hernandez. Go ahead. So is this the amount on an annual basis? And then since I'm fairly new to the board, how long, how many years have you guys been doing this? If this is an annual, this is the annual cost. This is for 20 rooms, which is uh, higher than we normally need on a day-to-day -day basis. But when we have trainees um, going down, we, we need to ensure that we do have enough rooms. And we have been doing this, oh boy, 17, 18, or 17 or 18 years. Okay, I was just wondering, I mean, I, I don't know exactly where the location needs to be, but I would think wouldn't, I mean, after 17 years, it almost, you know, it's going to keep increasing. Wouldn't you guys build something like a little facility for them instead? Yeah, we, yeah, we Wouldn't did, it be less expensive? Oh, I'm sorry. We we did we have looked into that as purchasing property, um, but the cost of the property and then the daily maintenance, the daily cleaning of the facility, um, the laundry service yeah. which has to be done daily, and then expanding service. We would need every time we had a train, we had three additional um, rooms when needed. So what we're looking at doing is. As we expand, we'll start getting into bi-directional service, which will no, we will no longer require the room themselves. So it's sort of an interim step until we get to that expanded um, rail service. But we will continue looking into other alternatives, um, Commissioner Hernandez. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? I have one question. Does, Go ahead. Uh, Brian, does this amount take into account the fact that we're what two trains now or going to three and then in September we're going to four. No, this is what we're looking at is the number of rooms for the entire fiscal year. So as Autumn mentioned, this the number is um, higher than it would than it would be 
if we go back to the rooms, but this is only a placeholder at this point. Um, I do not anticipate using any rooms until September at the very earliest. But in working with Marriott, they have an annual contract. So we just stuck with their annual 12 um, month period and for the number of rooms. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Questions from the public? Or no public comments on this item. Okay, bring it back to the commission. Yeah, we'll vote to approve. Thank you. So we have Young with the motion. Did, did I hear a second? Duper oh, second. second. We'll do Hernandez for the second. <laughs> Roll call. Commissioners, Hernandez. Yes, but I definitely want to make sure that we look and make sure that we follow through with an alternative. Will do. Commissioner May. Yes. Pothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Item 10 is an agreement with Kelson, Snook, and Nudec Inc. for the Robert J. Cabral Station expansion project to increase the total compensation by an amount of 396000 with the total contract amount not to exceed $758,562. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Dave Rupert, I'll take this item again. Next slide, please. So back in 2019, we hired KSN to complete the final design for the Corral Station expansion project. This is mostly focused on improving parking capacity and security for Ace and Snow Kings passengers. The project is located at the site of the former Western Pacific Railroad Depot in Stockton. Next slide, please. Uh, over the years, the WP Depot experienced several major fires and Subsequently, was demolished as it was a threat to public safety and welfare and could not be salvaged. Next slide. Uh, staff requested that KSN prepare an estimate to prepare design plans to construct a new building that resembled the features that destroyed Western Pacific Depot. This structure would provide passenger amenities, parking security, additional office space, act as an emergency operations center, and expanded meeting location. Uh, staff and KSN have negotiated the amended scope and fee that acceptable both parties. Construction of the project would begin in spring 2022. Next slide. And here we have some conceptual renderings of what the new building could look like. These are subject to change as we go through the design process, but we just wanted to show what this may look like. Next slide. Uh, fiscal impact, the funding sources being utilized are a variety of federal, state, and local funds. Expenses currently with this project are in the existing budget and are in the subsequent budgets and future year costs will be brought back to the board for consideration as part of the annual budget process. Next slide. And our staff recommendation is that you approve the amendment one with KSN to increase the NACTI seed amount by 396,000 and available for any questions that you may have. Uh, David, I do have a question. Um, my first question is regarding what we were able to salvage from the previous uh, structure. Will any of that be um, added to the project or utilized in the project? Yeah, we previously committed to salvaging some of those materials, as you noted, and seeing if they can be reused. And we would definitely look at that during the final design process to see what features, if any, can be utilized in the new building or done as some kind of commemorative monument or something like that. Okay. And then my other question with uh, construction proposed to start in spring of 2022, when might then the project be completed? Do you have an estimation on that? Um, I don't have a clear estimate on that, but I suspect it shouldn't take longer than the end of 2022 to complete the project. Wonderful. Because I want to be there for the ribbon cutting. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, any questions from the commission? And then I see uh, Mr. Wolf, you have a, a question or comment? Yeah, this is my own idiosyncrasy. Uh, nowadays, whenever I look at uh, constructions going on, um, I see if they're putting solar panels there. Um, I think with the coming climate change thing that's gonna hit us all and nobody's prepared for it, it's almost negligent not to include solar panels wherever you can put them. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. Okay, um, Commission, uh, looking for a motion on this item? And this is regular voting members. Zuber will move to approve. Okay, I'll go ahead and second. <laughs> so I can get myself in there somewhere. Commissioners, Hothi. Yes. Commissioner, thank you. Mil uh, Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Thanks, Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, passes. Thank you. Um, item 11, Amendment 01 to the agreement with T.Y. Lynn International for the Tuolumne River Bridge Project to increase the total compensation by amount of $1,508,047 with the contract amount not to exceed $3,111,021. Okay, hey, Madam Chair, I'll take the sign again. Next slide, please. So back in February 2020, the Rail Commission Board approved a contract with TYLN to prepare the final design for the Tuolumne River Bridge project in Modesto. This project is required for the uh, rail expansion down to Sirius Merced. The original contract was just for the bridge and didn't include any track work, and now we need to add approximately 1.2 miles of track work to the contract, which would connect the project to the track work being designed for the Modesto station to the north and the Sirius station to the south of the project. Next slide, please. Royal Commission staff requested the TOLN prepare a scope and fee to prepare the track design work. And also we asked them to prepare National Environmental Policy Act documentation necessary for federal environmental approval for the bridge and track work. This would allow us to have a project that would have independent utility and logical termini to be able to move forward if future federal funding becomes available for this project. Next slide, please. Funding source being utilized for this project is 400 million from the Senate Bill 132. Expenses are including the current budget and future costs will be brought back to the board as part of the annual budget process. Next slide, please. Our recommendation is you approve Amendment 1 to the agreement with TOR Lynn to increase the NOCTIS email by $1,508,047 and I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Questions from the commission? From the public? On the side. Okay. Back to the commission for a motion. Young move to approve. Okay. Uber, second. Okay, roll call. Commissioners, Hothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes, motion passes. Item 12, uh, approving two agreements for projects developed services for two projects identified in the capital projects program and authorizing executive director to execute any and all documents related to the projects not to exceed the below amounts, which you can see. Okay. Or, uh, Autumn Gow and I will be covering this item. Next slide, please. So this is for two projects uh, located in the uh, Sacramento County area. One is for the Phillips Siding Rehabilitation south of the city of Elk Grove. This would upgrade the existing siding to mainline track standards for the future Bell Rail service. Next slide, please. Uh, the second project is the Del Paso Siding Extension, which is located in the city of Sacramento, which would extend the existing siding to the south towards Arcade Creek for the future second mainline track. Next slide, please. And I'll turn it over to Autumn Gallon to talk about the procurement process. Thank you, David. The Rail Commission released the mini RFP to the established pre qualified consultant list established in 2019. Uh, three of the nine firms from that list uh, submitted proposals. Following established procurement process procedures, the Rail Commission staff reviewed and scored the proposals received. Based on the scores and ranking, the review panel concluded that oral presentations were not required. Select the most responsive firm for each project. Next slide, please. This slide shows the staff recommended consultants and the not to exceed amounts for each contract and the projects that they are assigned to. 
We have uh, rail surveyors and engineers for the Phillips Siding Project with amount of about 500, 511,000 and trans systems for the Del Paso Siding Project with an amount of, of approximately 2.1 million. Next slide, please. The funding sources being utilized is from the Tristop Award for the Valley Railroad Program. Expenditures occurring in this fiscal year are identified in the 2021 capital budget. They are both multi-year agreements and future year costs will be brought to the board as part of the annual capital budget review. And staff recommends the approval of the, oh, sorry, next slide. And staff recommends the approval of the two agreements for project development services for the two projects identified in the capital projects program. And we would be happy to take any questions. We can take this as one item. Okay. Um, so uh, any questions from the commission? I have one question. This is these costs are just for design. There will be something else coming through for the actual cost of doing the work. Correct. This is just the design costs, and then the next item we'll be talking about the project management costs as well, and then we'll have a future agreement uh, for construction in the future. Thank you. Anything from the public? There are no public comments on this. Okay, bring it back to uh, the Commission for Regular Voting Members. Duber will move to approve. Yang will second. second. Motion in the second. Okay, roll call. Commissioners, Hothi. Commissioner Healthy. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Similar item number 13, um, item 13, uh, approving two agreements for rail engineering services for five projects identified in the capital projects program and authorizing the executive director to execute any and all documents related to the projects not to exceed the below amount of $2,037,030.44. I wanted to say the 44 cents. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so as noted, we have five projects we're coming to the board for approval. Originally, we put out a RP to our on-call list for seven projects. However, two of the projects are not being acted on today. The City College Station has been deferred as it's not a priority for the agency right now for delivery of the Valley Rail Program. And the Dara Station relocation is not a shared facility for ACE and San Joaquin, so it will be approved by the SJA JPA Governing Board at their next meeting. Next slide, please. So the five projects are the Lodi Station, which is along State Route 12, west of the city of Lodi. The Stanislaus River Bridge in and near the city of Ripon. Next slide. The Tuolumne River Bridge that we discussed previously, and also the Phillips Siding Rehabilitation and the Del Paso Siding Extension that we discussed previously. Next slide, please. I'll turn back over to Autumn Gown. Okay, thank you again. So we followed the same process. We released the mini RFP to the pre-qualified list. Two of the three firms submitted, two of the three firms that were on that list submitted proposals. We followed the same procedures, reviewed and scored the proposals received and concluded that oral presentations were not required to select the most responsive firm for each project. Next slide, please. In this case, the table shows that we'll have two consultants, Panino Management Group for Lodi, Stanislaus, and Tuolumne for uh, about 1.7 million. And then we will have Lockwood, Andrews, and Newman for the Phillips siting and the Del Paso siting for about 322,000. Next slide, please. Uh, the funding being utilized is also TERSEP for the Valley Rail Program. Any expenditures in this fiscal year are identified in the current capital budget. They are multi-year agreements and future year's costs will be brought before the board for the review. Next slide, please. And with that, staff recommends for the rail engineering services for five projects, two agreements, and would be happy to take any questions. Okay, questions from the commission? Okay, public? There are no public comments. Okay, uh, back for our uh, commission for a motion. Move to approve. 
Thank you, Commissioner Hothi. Yang will second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioners, Hothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fagazi. Yes, motion passes. Moving on to item 14. Uh, it's a, a, approving a reimbursement agreement with UP Railroad for preliminary engineering services for the Elk Grove Station project for an amount not to exceed $865,000. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next slide, please. So as noticed, the proposed Elk Grove Station is located near Laguna Boulevard in the city of Elk Grove. Uh, the project includes construction of double track associated with the station. Uh, Union Pacific must review and approve all engineering plans and do so through standard preliminary engineering agreements. Uh, staff is entering, through requesting to enter into a reimbursement agreement with Union Pacific for them to complete their reviews. And the limit of this agreement will also include the Phillips sign that we discussed previously and also future connection of the Phillips sign with this Elk Grove station siding to create a continuous second main line. Slide, please. Uh, so here's a map showing the proposed location. Next slide, please. And the funding source is 500.5 million from TERSIP for the Valley Rail Program. Expenses are included in the current budget. And we request that you approve the staff recommendation to enter into the agreement with the Pacific not to exceed $865,000. And I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, questions from the commission? Public? There are no public comments on the side. Okay. We have that for a motion. Regular voting members. Zuber will move. Yeah, we'll to move. So Zuber and Young. Yeah. Okay. Commissioners, <laughs> <laughs> Hothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Okay. Item 15, authorizing the executive director or director of capital projects when delegated to by the executive director to negotiate and execute any and all master agreements, program supplemental agreements, fund exchange agreements, and or fund transfer agreements for the state funded transportation projects and any and all documents related to the project. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, last time for the day. Next slide. So the state new, administers numerous funding programs, and these are distributed to receiving agencies through master agreements. And master agreements are done every 10 years. The Rail Commission last entered into a master agreement with Caltrans back in 2011 to accept funding for state by the transportation projects. And these agreements, as I noted, are valid for 10 years, and now we're time for our renewal. The stream of the process is requested that the executive director and director of capital projects and delegated be given authority to sign and execute these administrative funding agreements with the idea that uh, we'll be able to receive funding from Caltrans and then come back to the board for you to approve expanding those funds on any its own contracts or construction agreements in the future. Next slide, please. Uh, so there's no fiscal impact, and our staff recommendation is that you approve our recommendation to negotiate and execute any all master agreements, program supplemental agreements, fund exchange agreements, or fund transfer agreements for state trend funded transportation projects. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, questions from the commission? I have one. So what you're, this is governing money coming in, but if any of that money is going to be spent on something, then it comes to the board for approval. Correct, this would just allow staff to work with Caltrans to receive funding, and we'd come back to the board for your approval to expend those funds on any needs. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Hothi. Zuber will second. And Zuber for the second. Roll call. Commissioners Hothi. Yes. Nuno. Yes. Young. Yes. Vice Chair Zuber. Yes. Chair Fugazi. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so at this time, oh, okay, commissioner's comment. 
I think we're we're going to suggest okay. in the interest of everybody's time. So they can go. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, Commissioner, comments? Any comments from the commission? I would just like to thank staff. I know that this was an enormous undertaking for this meeting, uh, and um, we we do what we do. And so, thank you so much for uh, providing us with all the information that we need in order to make uh, the best decisions for. Um, the uh, Commission, Regional Rail. Um, okay, ex officio comments then, moving on to item 18. Um, let's start off with um, Mr. Martinez from Caltrans. Are you still on? Uh, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. Uh, Stephen Martinez from Caltrans District 10. Quick updates. On May 17th, the CTC allocated more than $924 million for projects to improve critical transportation infrastructure throughout the state. Nearly half of this major investment comes from uh, SB1. Projects improved in District 10 are located in Merced, Tuolumne, and San Joaquin counties. Um, some updates from government, Governor Newsom's office. Uh, the governor announced a $12 billion plan to tackle the issue of homelessness. This investment will provide 65,000 people with housing placement, more than 300,000 people with housing stability, and create 46,000 new housing units. Uh, Governor, Newsom, Governor Newsom's plan includes a massive expansion of home key and other similar strategies to get housing up and running quickly. The California Comeback Plan includes almost $50 million in targeted programs and grants to local governments to move, move people out of unsafe, unhealthy encampments into safer, more stable housing. Um, second, there's another up, upcoming initiative. It is a $7 billion broadband proposal to expand cyber internet networks in California and four billion of the seven billion will be invested into our state highway system um, with details of forthcoming. Um, thirdly, his update, there is a, a Clean California initiative with $1.5 billion investment over the next three years, including uh, hundreds of million dollars in litter abatement, state and local beautification projects, and millions of dollars in art grants, public education, uh, project design construction, and local support and engagement. Um, I would like to take the time to share the fiscal year 2021 Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity Raise Discretionary Grant Program Notice of Funding Opportunity. The U.S. Department of DOT is currently soliciting applications for the uh, 2021 Raise Grant Program. The maximum award amount is $25 million with a minimum of $5 million for urban areas and $1 million for rural areas. In addition, $30 million in planning, planning grants will be awarded with $10 million going to areas of persistent poverty, um, which is the raise grant metric for evaluating poverty using census data. 80% of a project's cost can be funded through the raise grant for projects in urban areas. In addition, up to 100% of a project's cost can be funded through the raise grant for projects in rural areas or for planning projects near an area of persistent poverty. Um, at the district, we continue to double down on efforts to pick up litter at high visibility areas. We have dedicated several days a month for all of our maintenance crews to pick up litter and allocated more resources to work on the weekends and, and have executed emergency contracts to pick up litter five days a week in the valley. We're looking to potentially expand our efforts through um, ex executed delegated maintenance agreements and also our volunteer adopt a highway program is available for anybody who would like to be a part of our litter abatement program and, and adopt a section of, of your highway. Uh, Caltrans will replace and re rehabilitate the northbound, southbound Stockton Channel viaduct bridges in the, in the city of Stockton on Interstate 5. Uh, Caltrans proposes to replace um, and rehabilitate the existing bridge superstructures as well as all substructures. This is to meet uh, current standards of the American Association of State Highway and transportation officials' load resistance factor design. Uh, Caltrans has installed highway shield markers on eastbound State Route 120 through Manteca to help reduce traffic uh, incidents and improve efficiency for motorists as they travel through this busy corridor towards um, the State Route 99 interchange. Uh, my last update, Caltrans is still on emergency telework until further notice, and, we're, and we are working on a more permanent telework plan uh, for staff to return as a hybrid telework in office settings in the next couple of months. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Zalaki. Uh, no comments. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, Mr. Dial. Good morning, Commissioners. I uh, just wanted to remind you that we will be doing our second virtual One Voice uh, June 22nd and 23rd. 
So we will be uh, sending out uh, information regarding that in the next week or so. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody, any other ex officios on that I didn't, that we haven't recognized yet? Okay, thank you. Um, item 19, Executive Director's Report. I'm just gonna say thank you to Vice Chair Zuber who asked staff to put some routine items on the consent calendar because I think you, you all probably had your fill on the main agenda. So you can thank him for a robust consent calendar that moved along quickly. Okay, um, so uh, this body will be adjourning to a closed session. We will return after closed session, of course, to close out the meeting. But at this time, uh, commissioners, you will um, log off and then call back in. And Jackie, they have that number? Okay. So um, we'll be uh, uh, adjourning for closed session, not adjourning the meeting. Okay, we're gonna be going out to closed session and we'll be coming back afterwards. So thank you all for uh, being in on the meeting. The commission is now adjourning into closed session regarding action item 16. There are no facts or circumstances to disclose at this time. You may remain on this uh, uh, video conference um, so when the commission resumes its meeting after closed session uh, we'll be coming back here thank you
not in focus. Okay, so um, I will go ahead and take roll to see who's all on. Um, Hernandez? Commissioner here. Hernandez? I'm here. Commissioner, okay. Commissioner May? Yes. Commissioner Hoti? Commissioner Nuno? I'm here. Commissioner Young? Yep, I see you. <laughs> Vice Chair Zuber, I see you too. <laughs> and I am here as well. So, um, do we have anything to report out from closed session? Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. The Commission has reconvened from closed session regarding action item number 16. All the Commissioners were present during the entirety of the closed session, with the exception of Commissioner Elliott, who is or Miller, who is absent today. There's no reportable action at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, this meeting is adjourned till July 21st, 2021 at 8 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. You too. Oh, they can't see me. <laughs>